Good morning. It's time for Relaxing Painting with Dice and Dungeons. And what we're going to be doing today is probably not doing any painting, but um, talking about some things that have been finished, some things that I'm going to be working on, maybe on the stream, maybe not, and um, some things that will definitely be showing up on the stream fairly soon. Uh, what we have here, you can only see the tops of them, so I'm going to lay them down so you can see what I'm talking about, is our rosin printer has been working um, over the weekend and has produced a bunch of mini figs. And these mini figs are going to be painted over the next, well, if I'm painting them, they're going to take forever. Um, so yes, for the next forever, after we get these primed, which we'll be doing today, um, I will start painting them on this stream. And we're going to be seeing Dungeons and Dragons painting stuff again. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different kinds of things here. We've got a, I'm going to hold them up to the camera. I've got the camera far away for a reason that I'll explain later, but there's this guy. We've got this guy who looks like a, some sort of fire mage holding a book and flames in his hands. And the camera is not quite focusing, but the flames are, well, let's just say highly detailed. The rosin printer does, does really amazing detail, which, you know, like on the face, and so on. Um, got, looks like maybe a druid with a staff casting a spell. Now uh, we've got somebody with a sword pointing. Um, that means that this figure is somebody that, like, uh, probably isn't going to do anything, right? Just pointing and telling people where to go and what to do, swinging the sword around. Or maybe maybe she's calling somebody out and saying, hey, you, come and face my sword, my blade. I don't know. Then another kind of sorcerer, wizard kind of person with, uh, with fire. Uh, okay, sorry. Everything's backward. If I move right, there we go. You can see that. Got a couple of these guys um, wearing plate armor and swinging a two-handed sword. So if we meet in combat, if we meet in combat on our stream, um, that's probably not going to be good. Another one. Anyway, we've got 10 of these guys that need to be uh, primed, and then we'll start painting them and eventually use them. I'm not sure what's happening here. It looks like, looks like maybe this was intended to be a sword and it didn't. Yeah, because there's a sheath here. It's like the blade didn't, didn't get finished. Um, I've fixed that kind of thing before. I don't know if anybody recalls, but probably a couple of months ago, there was a dual wielder. Hold on just a second. It goes up here. Okay. I have been informed by a watcher. Um, I don't know. How can you prime it if it's not a prime number? We needed to print one more. If we'd printed one more, it would have worked. So I'm being told that one or more of these cameras isn't working. Um, when I'm looking at it here on my monitor, everything seems to be working just fine. There was an update that installed itself just before I got started. So I'm not really quite sure. 
So who are you watching or just listening? Are you watching the stream? Who? Is there a picture? You're half watching. Well, the half, I'm on screen. Are the minifigs on screen? Can you see the minifigs? I was on screen before 10 o'clock. So when it was supposed to be saying the stream will be starting soon, it was actually stream. Okay. So you can see, you can see the minis. See these guys? They're moving around. Yep. You can see me. So apparently somebody else, um, I don't know. I don't know what the problem is. Great. Yeah. I don't know quite how that happened because I had it on the preview screen. The screen stream will be starting, but yep. Okay. Well, it's Monday and things are, yeah, they're happening that way. Okay. Tell you what. This is number 11. This is the beholder. This was primed earlier. You can see the difference in color. Okay. Between primed and unprimed. It's much larger model, very detailed. Uh, Nicole will be painting this because I'm not going to be able to take this kind of thing on. So maybe that'll be our prime number 11. Well, thanks. Thanks who? So these minis are going to get primed and then I'm going to start working on these, these figures probably starting on Wednesday. So that will be a little bit more interesting than a couple of things we've been doing. Yeah, I've done math before. I've done fractions and decimals and things. Um, but I'm not going to be working on these today because they're not primed. So I'm going to set them aside. Get to watch me make them disappear. Look at that. You know, when they go off camera, camera is the only reality. They, they literally disappear into another dimension. And I have to recall them from that dimension later in order to prime them. Maybe it's, is it maybe the fifth dimension? That would be a, probably some sort of trademark or copyright violation to say that. Um, so yeah, the other thing I did I'm sure you're really glad that I'm finally done with this because now you don't have to see it anymore on on, uh, on the stream. But I think Eliminator, I think Eliminator is now finished. Yeah, you know, he has this cherry bomb in his hand, and he he has his little car here, little car getting smushed. So Fink Eliminator is now. that action figure too is now officially finished and you won't be seeing me do that again for a while until we run out of things that were printed that need to be um, printed and primed before I can show them on the show. But I can now put Pink Eliminator aside and we'll put him somewhere where he doesn't catch the dust. But what I'm going to be working on today is just yeah, filling time, basically, right? Yeah, do something until real Dungeons and Dragons stuff is ready to to work. Is I have some authentic. These are really big, so they can only all show on camera. Polaris launching nuclear subs that actually fires missiles. Um, these, this kit is one of the originals, one of the Renwall models from the 1960s. And I built one of these when I was, I think probably like in eighth or ninth grade. So, you know, that dates things a little bit. There you go. See, that's 
That's what it looks like when we when we created nuclear annihilation from undersea in the 1960s. Does that happen? Uh, but these were originally produced in the 1960s, and it's a really cool model. It's not highly detailed. I guess we didn't want to give away any secrets, you know, about how well, these submarines actually work. This kind of, I call it an, an impression. It's the impression of the inside of the submarine. You can see the highly detailed reactor here. You know, it's even cut away so you can see the the coil and and the, the nuclear fuel heating things up. You know, of course, there's all this machinery that collects the steam and turns it into something that turns the propeller. So these these models were really cool. I built one back way back when when they first came out. Yeah, I'm going to ramble for a good long time today. And the cool thing about this is that the the hull does open. There's two. When, when I open this, you'll we'll, we'll find out what I've got. I'll explain why in a minute. Um, yeah, so this thing opens up, and then you see the inside, which is not nearly as detailed as as that seems to show. But we'll see what we can do. Painting tiny little gauges is always exciting. Um, yeah, so these things were built, and they're really. I'll just say this, they're really hard to find now in any kind of condition that, like, unbuilt, it was just next to impossible to find one that was unbuilt. Um, mo most people started these things. You start with the torpedo room and the conning tower, and you build these modules, and they kind of insert as you go along from front to back, and then the, the back end here with the fins that's usually put together and then glued on but these were really hard to find when i was looking for them in any kind of unbuilt condition at least for under hundreds of dollars which i didn't want to spend um here's you can hear the here's some of the noise to get the cruise mess and galley there's all sorts of tables but i'm not sure you can see the galley it is an officer's mess because you get chairs instead of benches mm. that's where you attack that's the attack center so if you want to attack something you go there um, it's important to have escape patches they only labeled one there's one here but there's actually one in the front here too so you can you can get out of your of your submarine if you need to escape from here and here but that's the most important part the atomic reactor room with the gyro room here. Yeah, anyway, these were really hard to find unbuilt. And so I was able to find some that got started. And I actually bought three of them, hoping that I'll be able to piece together one complete kit. I'm not sure if that'll work or not. That's what we're going to find out today. Is I'm hoping that I'll be able to put together one submarine with these three kits, that there's enough parts salvageable parts or unused parts or not missing parts to be able to do that so what i'm going to be doing today is opening these up and seeing what we've got and hopefully hopefully there will be enough pieces to build an entire submarine now actually the three models there's there's two George Washingtons. I was able to get the George Washingtons. I don't know if you can see this, but it, it's upside down, but it's fabulous. Renmal went out of their way to, to tell us that the model is fabulous. I was able to get two George Washingtons. There's one. Here's the other. This box is a little better condition in, in general, but it got torn here. And the third one is a later issue called the Ethan Allen, um, but it looks, you know, you look at this bit here, it's, it looks like it's exactly the same. So I'm hoping that when, um, when I put this to, when I start unboxing these that I find 
that the parts in here fit in the other one. Um, I'm not sure quite why they, what they did here, but this one, the Ethan Allen one, is 25 inches long, okay? And these are advertised as 24 inches long. So there's another, either an exaggeration in terms of how long the model actually is, or they stretched out the tail or something. Anyway, I hope it all fits together. So, yeah, I, that's what I'm doing. The, oh, yeah, they kept reissuing this. So it came out as a George Washington, which I think was the very first Polaris launching nuclear sub, Polaris being the original single warheaded missile before the Trident came out, which was the multiple warheaded missile, and the submarines got bigger. Um, Ethan Allen was one of the little bit later ones, but as they kept reissuing these, they actually got really fancy, and there was a clear plastic cover that went over this entire exposed part of the submarine. So instead of having a hull that opened, okay, just a, a gray plastic hull that kind of hinged down, trouble with the hinges maybe, um, yeah, there was a plastic cover. And speaking of the the clear plastic cover on things, Renmall was very famous for producing some amazing um, models like that. There, If you remember, there was this visible man and visible woman where the body shape was clear plastic and you could see some of the internal organs. I'm not quite sure why they put those out. I thought they were kind of gross and never actually got one. But uh, they did that. And they did this thing called a visible V8. It was um, an engine, a plastic engine that was clear on the outside. So you could see all the parts that worked on the inside. And the valves kind of moved and the pistons moved up and down. Yeah, that was a pretty amazing kit with tons of parts. It was another one of those that people started and said, oh, okay, that was a bad idea. So you can find those on the secondary market, maybe still, but uh, partially constructed. So getting one that that isn't ugly is, uh, is a trick. To really, then what they did, and this was pretty amazing, is they had this visible V8, right? This model V8 engine was about like about that big or so when it was completed is they had a visible chassis. They actually produced a model of a car with a transmission and a differential, you know, front engine, rear wheel drive kind of thing. And you could take your visible V8 and install it in this chassis. And it so supposedly would run. Probably, you know, the plastic gears and things might run a little bit, but or very slowly. But it, that was that was a really rare thing. I didn't even know it existed until I started looking for some of these Renwall things. And they popped up under Renwall. Anyway, yes, this is uh, a submarine, uh, and it does launch a missile. I remember this. There is one of these where the the tube is open and the little hatch on the top flaps open and there's a spring with a lever under here and you can pull it down and this plastic missile, there is one, hopefully there's one still in one of these kits, uh, pops out, goes up maybe about eight inches or so. Very, not very threatening, I guess, on an international level, but um, it did, it did pop up. Uh, yeah, some other amazing things about this is that they didn't expect you to be very sophisticated in your painting. So the painting instructions will tell you helpful things like green, yellow, brown, white, red. Okay. Um, shading was not really uh, an issue here. Uh, it does show you that like in the torpedo room and up in the command center, that the green is really kind of a light green, kind of a light green color. Usually that's not the color green that you could buy the testers uh, enamels. So if this one got started, we're going to see what they did. Yeah, anyway, that's the story about why I've got this kit and why I've got three of them and 
I don't know what I'm going to find. We're going to see if there's enough in, to make a submarine out of these. Ready? Let's, um, yeah. We've got instructions. We need to read those carefully before assembly. And you can see here, it's like white, green, red, tan. Some rings are silver with red tips. Okay. And yeah, so that's that's a really sophisticated kind of uh, instructions that you get. And the way this is put together, and I guess we'll kind of see that, is that you build these modules and then insert them into the hull. And this is the torpedo room. There's lots of torpedoes. And then the second thing is the sail with the like the snorkel and the periscopes and things. Um, you know, you get your tan and you get your silver. And these are supposed to actually work, at least some of them, okay? The tubes down here, these these pieces up here insert into it and you're supposed to be able to like pull them up and down on them. Anyway, let's see how that happens. Oh yeah, here, this is cool. Here's the gyro deck, it's the fifth one. so. Three and four are buried under here, but there's there's the gyro with a control console. So uh, yeah, this is how it's supposed to go. You can see why people got this far, and they said, "Oh, I'm on step two, and then there's and then we get this. Boom! Look at that. That's the mess deck and the bunk deck. And you're supposed to. They've even. I never even. I didn't remember this." There's hams somewhere in the kit. Maybe there's a, a hang, three hanging hams. And there is, ah, oh, there is a mess all oh, there. Yeah, way in the back where you can hardly see it. There's a kitchen all painted white. Yeah, taking care of the detail with a door that covers it up. So you paint all this detail. There's a water cooler, all sorts of cool things that are then kind of covered and stuck in the back. There's even these little figures. There's a guy laying down in his bunk. Tiny little little figures that you're supposed to uh, paint. They don't give you painting instructions. I suppose you should do them uniform color, but there's a little guy sitting in a chair in the control room and little bunks in the control room, I suppose that's, you know, so you can be there cases in an urgent situation. Oh, that's just part of the kitchen. Got bunks, bunks in the back of the control room. Wow, yeah, there's lots of, uh, this, this is way more than I remembered. I may actually finished this when I was a kid and it turned out really quite well. Anyway, let's see what we've got. We have, This is the part of the hull here that flips down. Okay, so that's there. This is where the hinge goes on the on the stand. Stand here, and it goes together like that. And you're supposed to. Broken, nice. So that one's broken already. That's a good start. So the way this is works is these tiny little pegs. They're slightly robust, but are supposed to fit in there. Don't, of course. You know they don't. There we go. Is that rotates on that? But the. Well, hopefully on the other models, we've got some stands, but this, I uh, already see that that's busted. So this this one isn't looking really good. Um, here's the nose. The nose is a single piece, okay? That was not messed up. That's kind of a shock. And let's see. Oh, here's the tail. 
tail has working, there's these little working fins, except, you know, one of them isn't working, it's busted off, and two and a half out of the five blades on the propeller are broken. So that's an auspicious start to this particular one. And let's see what we got inside. We've got a lot of a lot of sprues they're called, okay, with a whole lot of parts that aren't on them. So I don't know what we're gonna find as I dig down into the box here. But there's what I've got here is there's supposed to be parts all over the place, is I've got two ladders. So at least there's something there. Uh, the inside, yeah, they started the torpedo room. It's all glued together. None of it was painted. In some ways, that's a good thing because usually the painting on these things is really awful. Um, yeah, it's usually terrible. So I don't know if it's going to be possible. Sometimes it is if it's not well cemented to pull this apart and repurpose those parts. So that's that's kind of disappointing. Here, no, oh yeah, this is lovely. They they started to put together this the sail. Okay, well that's I guess that's okay. They started to put together the sail. And it's very badly done. The cement's in here, and you can see the cement just broke up. But um, what we can see is if I re if I can repurpose this, is that the um, it's has cemented. This one is working. Okay. You can, can see how, let me do it on the white here. Great, little pieces, little pieces falling out of the box. Is the way this is supposed to work is that, um, you can see that that slides up and down. And so the, uh, at least this thing, this one component is working and the cement on there probably could be cleaned off. There's another one here, whatever is in there isn't there anymore. Hopefully it's in the box, we'll see. Here we've got one, but it looks like, as I take this apart, it's much better when it's in pieces. There, that's good, is that this one is stuck. It looks like they, they got the cement on it somehow or jammed it in the hole. So I'm not sure. Oh, yeah, it's coming loose. This is good. There we go. Yeah, that can be salvaged. So at least two out of the three up in the sail can be salvaged. And then we'll see what we get on the other kits. But this is all coming apart because whatever they used on here was not regular model cement, which would have... Um, Regular model cement would have melted the plastic. It actually is a solvent for the polystyrene. So whatever they use, it looks like maybe wood glue. I'm not sure. Um, very helpfully peels off for the most part. If the torpedo room is done the same way, if this thing here was done using the same not quite right cement, Okay, I might be able to pull it apart and reuse those pieces because having them not painted is, is really a good thing. So here's a whole bunch of stuff from the sale. Yeah. I brought containers, okay, because I figured there'd be little pieces floating around all over the place. And there are. We're going to put those in there. Uh, let's see, what else have we got? This is, oh, this is the mess hall, or at least the start of it. And this too, uh, it looks like somebody started it with some cement 
and went so far as to glue in some bunks. Uh, they're not cemented in, it's just stuck in. So this isn't, this is turning out to be less awful than I feared, depending on how much is left. Like here's another sprue, okay? And all that's left on there is number 70, 71 here, 74. Yeah, that looks like part of the engine room probably. So other than the tail, the tail is just totally almost worthless because this is broken. The fins are broken. The propeller is busted up. Um, here's another piece of the sail. Yeah, it looks like somebody went through here and said, oh, let's, let's break up all the parts. That'll be fun. And take all the parts off of the trees. Completely empty. That one's dead to the world. Here's one where they they only took about half of them off. And if I recall the instructions, this is the gyro for the gyro room. That's pretty cool. And then there's a whole bunch of pipes that go into the engine room somewhere. And no, oh, here's some of the little guys. No, are they? Like, it looks like these are just supposedly some of the little guys. Maybe they're in like radiation suits or something. Kind of, that's really bizarre. This has one little part on it, two little parts. Well, this is kind of fun opening this up and just finding there's a lot of unpainted parts, which is really good. Here's the, the very top. This is, this is where the missiles go in. I remember this pretty well. There's lots of bits to this. Um, this is the very top of the submarine, I think. You can see this is where the, this is the bottom, okay, the very bottom, the tubes. The tubes all fit into these holes. And then one of them has a hatch here that opens. Who knows where if there's a hatch in somewhere in this box or not. Um, so this goes the, the missile tubes, and they, they started putting a whole bunch of these together. So I can show you how that works. They go in here. This goes on uh, there like that, okay? That's open, and this, these go here, and that's the hatch on the very top that opens up. So this is all, well, those, those pieces are there. There's another piece that goes to that. That's gonna take a while. Here is a piece of orange plastic that has nothing to do with this kit at all. Ah, this is the part of the missing sail. It looks like they they said, oh, yeah, let's glue together all the missile tubes. And these are salvageable. Um, the You can see the the seam, okay? But what we what's easy to do is you fill that with plastic putty, a little bit where it's open, and then sand it all down. There's a lot of how many parts are missing. Since they're off the trees, they're not labeled. Here's another part of the sail. Some of the glue stuck on it that can be scraped off and oh my, scraped off and sanded down. Here's a hundred. That has nothing at all to do with the kit. <gasps> Dr. Pumpkins on the raid. Hi. Um, let me explain what's going on here. 
This is the Dyson Dungeons, and generally what we're doing, what we paint here are these wonderful dungeon tiles, okay, like this, or the stone ones, or operating doors, okay, or our Dungeons and Dragons campaign, but we are in between a little bit of a gap. We had a Thank you. Yeah, the, um, oh yeah, here's some some nice stone ones that came through. Stone floors. Um, so generally that's what I do is I've been painting those for a long time, but then we finished up the dungeon tiles we needed and the rosin printer has been working full time. And now we've got 10 of these mini figs. Thank you for the follow, really welcome. Um, yeah, these mini figs need to be primed and I'm going to be doing that tonight or tomorrow. And then we're going to get back to painting Dungeons and Dragons mini figs and, and, um, dungeon tiles. I really love these doors. Okay. The way they work. Isn't that cool? But to fill the time today, because it's Monday and we stream from 10 until 2, um, I was explaining that when I was a kid, I built this Renoir submarine model where you um, flip it down and it shows the inside, okay? And I went and I purchased three of these because they always are started somehow. For some reason, people start them and then they don't get very far. Um, so this is the first one. And I'm picking through the pieces to try to see what's here and what isn't. And I'm finding that I've got garbage. I've got a hundred. Yeah, the submarine is actually, the, this model is really cool when it's done. Um, but this one was started, started poorly. They didn't even use regular model cement, it looks like, because a lot of this flakes off, which I'm really happy about because uh, I'm able to salvage almost all of the sail. And I'm hoping I can salvage the torpedo room by pulling that apart, but they totally messed up the tail. Um, I mean, they got part of it done, they glued it together. The seams didn't line up at all. They broke one off, the propeller smashed. So I'm gonna either have to rebuild that or hope that the other kit had them. Um, let's see. Yeah, all of these parts are off the trees. So it's gonna be hard to like, find them and identify them and get them in the right places. But it, oh, this is cool. This is um, the hatch, the hatch for the missile that fires that goes on here, goes up underneath this like that. And then this piece, um, one of these other pieces holds it in place, this one. So that the, the hatch on the top of the submarine actually opens up. And I think I saw it in here. Yep, there it is. There's the Polaris missile that actually uh, shoots up from one of the tubes. One of the launch tubes has a little lever on it and it's spring loaded. So I'm looking in here and I'm thinking that this, this set might not be totally complete. Okay. Uh, for example, I'm looking here for the, these are the, these are great. I love the detail, right? These are the dining room tables. Uh huh. This is, yeah, this is, this is going to turn into a puzzle as I try to put this together. So this is like one of the tables and there needs to be, I don't know, like a dozen of these things and I'm not seeing that man. Oh, these are lovely. Somebody pulled these off, right? They have crew guys to scale. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really tiny, right? Yeah, there's furniture. There's, uh, 
these are the bunks, uh, luxury accommodations. And you can see here where they put it together. They, these are the bunks in the, the these are the, the high class bunks. These are the bunks in the torpedo room. So underneath those bunks is a rack of six torpedoes, just like this one. And if this were to completed, there'd be another set of bunks above here. So that's, that's where you definitely really want to be, but there's also a set of bunks. These must be like officer bunks or something, because there's they're only too high here. These guys are only too high as opposed to three high. So, and it's right outside the control room. And you, oh, you can really tell it's officers because there's some guy here. There's probably one in here somewhere. Uh, who's sweeping, sweeping the floor. Yeah. And then there's more bunks down below. This is, this shows you where the tables are. And over here, if you can see it, there's one table with chairs around it. And it's probably a real fancy, that's the fancy eating room. And in fact, uh, yeah, here they are. Here's, here's some chairs. These are probably the dining chairs, and these are like the command control chairs like you got on the bridge of the Enterprise, right? Anyway, this uh, this kit, now that I'm getting down into it and seeing what's here and what isn't here, here's part of the reactor. This is actually the reactor core. And if, you, if we paint it correctly, it's cut away. The core is cut away. Uh, we can we can paint this so that it's like oh you know really hot paint it like a yellowish white kind of color like it's glowing there's just there's a lot of cleaning up to be done though there's a lot of mold marks on these parts so this isn't too bad what's what's really good about this is more than one more than one missile look at that there's two of them I guess so that's because they're they're launched, you know, out of the tubes, the spring-loaded tube, you're, they expect you're going to lose one. Here's the one. Here's the one that they really messed this one up. This is where the lever goes, and there's a spring that goes down inside of that. And so the missile goes in, pushes down, and then the lever is released, and it shoots out. There's no... There's no spring here. There's a hole in the box. The parts have to go out. That's good, especially if you look hard. There's more little guys. There's a chair. They broke off one little chair. Okay, so what I'm going to do with this box a little bit later is I'm going to go through and take all these tiny pieces that are broken off of the trees and put them in this bowl notice there's a hole in the box and they are oh one of the one of the propellers off of the busted thing put that in another bowl okay so when i opened this up and saw all of these trees with all the parts already off of them i thought there's going to be hardly anything left of this model but it looks like they just, whoever started this said, oh, this will be great fun just taking all the pieces off and dropping them into the bottom of the box. There's the tables. Not sure what that's supposed to be, but it looks like it's, oh, it's just a broken piece of one of the trees. Yeah, here's another propeller blade. Great. More tables. Mm -hmm. This is this is going to be fun trying to find pieces of where they fit. And oh, the decal, the decal sheet is still here. That's okay too. Okay, so this was not this was not too awful a disappointment. Here's some more parts to the hatch. It's just that it's going to be a real struggle kind of going through here. I 
identifying which pieces go there. More little chairs. Okay, yeah, I'm just, sorry. I'm just going through here, picking up the little pieces so that I don't lose more than we, we probably lost through the torn box. But, and you're not gonna see me be doing much of this building on the stream because this is supposed to be a the dungeons campaign, not a antique submarine thing. Oh yeah. Okay, so we got little tables. These are cool. Try to I want to try to paint some of the detail. This is all full of little buttons and it's got some screens down at the bottom. Table. Parts of the engine room. But even more missile tubes. <laughs> okay, this is cool. This is a locker room with lockers. And you can see that they, they even put the hinges and the handles on them. And then these are books. And so a locker room and library. I guess, you know, you combine functions. Why not? Well, there might be enough in here. It's going to come really close to being enough to building this thing. Oh, this is part of the kitchen. Oh, yeah. Okay. So this is all sorts of detail I didn't pay attention to when I was, when I was young doing this because it just said, the instructions say, paint this white. Okay, just paint this white, and you do. But there's drawers, there's cabinets, there's pots and pans hanging on the back there. Um, they put in the faucets and the sink. Yeah, this is going to be, I just, you know, painted glossy white testers paint on that when I was young and lost the whole thing. Or this, this is just painted tan, it says, but it's got all sorts of dials and things that one could paint the faces on. The detail on there. Yeah, okay. So I'm remembering a little nostalgia bit, sort of, that this model is much more detailed than I remembered. And then you know, it might actually be kind of cool. Oh, yeah, here's the... I don't know what I'm going to find in the other boxes, but if worst comes to worst, I can always, uh, there's the missing fin. I don't know what I can do about this. Found two of the blades. So I think I've got most of the tiny pieces out of here. Here's one. And we'll put those in a baggie. We'll come back to this one a little bit later. Um, definitely old. I now have antique dust all over my hands. It's really kind of gross. But I have to say that when I first opened this and saw all the empty trees, you know, all of these with none of the parts on them that I thought, I might not have much of a model here at all but it looks like I probably got like maybe 80% of it at least. And some of it is salvageable and it's unpainted. It's the important part. Okay. So let's shove that back together. This is, this is going to be, I'm going to pull some of these other parts out and put them in a baggie a little bit later, okay? So some of them, the box is torn. It's really all, it's falling apart here. I'm gonna set this over here. This one, when I bought it on eBay, it looked like it was much more complete. The box is heavier. I don't know what that means. Okay. Um, 
all these itty bitty pieces that would otherwise get lost are going in a Ziploc bag. Be putting yet even more in here because I'm going to take even some of the medium sized pieces out. Okay, so let's see what we've got here. This looked like it was in better shape, so except for the tape tear here, um, the box is less busted. we got uh, I see plastic bag that's a good sign it's inspected by it was inspected by one 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 four six space eight three there are no instructions with this one okay it's a letter from the seller So it's a good thing there were instructions in the other one because there are none in this one, which is not helpful. I'm going to take this plastic bag out. Okay, what have we got here? Oh, a whole lot of parts. I'm going to inspect those in a bit. This, oh, this is cool. This is the spring. That's the spring to launch the missile. That's going in the bowl here. And there's the missile. And here's the stand. And this stand, okay, this stand is not broken. That's, that's an excellent thing. And other part of the tail. Looks like they started to take some stuff off. But a lot of the pieces, like this is part of the sail, those, those aren't. So this is good in that um, this ha they have not busted this yet. Let's see if the fins are still around anywhere. Move this out of the way. These are in really good shape. Um, okay, except, okay, the stand is okay, but the the hinge on the hull, look at that, is broken off. So it looks like uh, the other one was okay here, but the stand was broken where the hinge goes. This one, the stand is okay, but the hull is broken. Go figure. There's a lot of parts here that are not painted but there's also parts that have come on. I want to put these. There's there's one of the fins that go on the tail. There is a... I'm going to put these in the holes so they're not warm. The decals are a little yellowed and curled. They haven't put the tubes together yet. Okay, which is good. It's one torpedo. One unpainted torpedo. Looks like most of the pieces for the sail are not painted. There's another missile. There's the hatch. <laughs> the hatch for the missile. That's not a good sign. That is a blade for the propeller. That might be like totally reconstructing a propeller here. Tiny little bits here, little ladder. I am off screen, I'm just pulling stuff out of the box here. Let's see what I've got. Okay, they started painting the torpedoes. Um, Whatever silver they were using is really silver. That's really shiny. But they didn't go through any of the trouble of, of cleaning off the mold mark 
here or on this side, okay, or the tips here. I'm going to come back to this in a minute. Let's see what I can do. There's a lot of unpainted parts here, and I'm especially happy that this much of the tail is not glued together yet. So what I'm going to keep here is this torpedo, because I'm going to see if I can do something more with it. And I want to open this bag and see why... Yeah, see, nothing's glued in here yet. So this side, this this hull is, so the two of them together, assuming these parts are the same, um, this one's busted, this one's not glued together. A little bit later, I'm going to check those out. So this, this is not the original bag. Okay, so am I seeing plastic bag? I was not seeing an original bag of parts, but a lot of the parts are still on the trees. And what I'm seeing if painted, this is not too bad. Um, okay, here, here we go. Let me take some, some of these out just to see what we're dealing with here. This out. This out. Here's another another painted torpedo that came off of the screw. Uh, a lot of the missile tubes aren't off yet. So this is not bad. But so there's a couple of really important things I want to find. One is I'm seeing that they started painting all these torpedoes. There's three of them that are off. You know, there's one, one here. Other one that was painted on the bag. Probably, if I need to, I can pry one off of the other model if I have to, if the third one doesn't work. What I'm not seeing immediately, and I need to look for it. Okay, this, this is the tail and, the, and one of the two fins. good so far. This is the propeller, okay? And apparently these blades really, really like to jump off. But this one's got four, and there's the fifth one. And I'm pretty sure that I'll be able, if, if nothing else, I'll be able to repair that. It's way better than the other one where three of them were broken off. I found two blades, and the third one was just fractured but here i've got a four fifths intact propeller and the blade that goes with it and i've got a whole bag of stuff here that's mostly mostly okay yeah like a lot of the Missile tubes are taken off of the trees, but that's that's not that bad a thing. There's one of the torpedoes. So I might be like short one torpedo, but I'll be able to get that off of the other one if I need to. What I'm looking for is, as I'm poking around in this bag, what I'm looking for is is the other fin that the the rotating fin that goes on the on the, on the tail, one you know, of the control surfaces. Yep. And so I'm have I'd have to find the instructions and look at them to see how that's supposed to be put together. What I know is that the other one, the one on the other one is broken. Yeah. 
busted. This one hasn't been glued together yet, so it might it might be might be okay. It looks like maybe that's that's one of the control surfaces, but I'm not sure how it is supposed to fit. And I don't see the other one right off. What I am going to do with these tubes for the sale is I'm going to put the torpedo and most importantly, that the blade for the propeller, that goes in there. This, this is a green, okay, painted green. So this is painted green. It's really badly done. So we'll see if I can get this paint off. I'm going to play with it a little bit. And if not, what I can do to maybe prime over it, if I can smooth it out. Um, I'm pretty sure this is probably, they started painting at the front, so this is probably part of the torpedo room bulkhead. Maybe I can clean up the one on the first model. Maybe I'll get lucky in the, the third model will work. What I want to do is, um, I know I said I put that aside, but I'm curious now about how this will work. Is this is the other okay? So there's this and this, and they're flattened, and there must be some sort of shaft. These are the control surfaces for the tail. Okay. And the way this looks is that there has to be something on the inside that cements onto this to hold them on because they're supposed to operate. Okay. And they're flattened. So either there's a shaft that goes between them or something like that. And this is curved around like that. So it goes like that. Okay, so this goes inside of that somehow. So this is not this is not too bad. Okay, so the um, the way this will work is that you open this up. This one either like here is going to set in here and hinge like that, and then when you glue it together, that, that's what holds it in. This is the one that's not broken on the other one so that that operates. And then these other ones, loose, will go in here. And then there's probably like a cap. I'm guessing there's just a cap that cements onto there that you have to put on very carefully so you don't get the cement onto. Oh, that's what happened. It's the other people on the other one is you have to be really careful and just put a drop of cement on the very, very tip of that shaft so that when the cap goes on, it still rotates. But they got the cement down onto it. That's why the one that's on there doesn't turn, and why the other one they tried to turn it, they snapped it off. So somewhere in here are tiny little round things that fit onto those. But this, this whole tail thing is is here it's here and the propeller is only broken in one spot so this model is nearly complete but i want to check though Okay, um, this is a little scarred up. That's okay. I'm going to actually paint this. One is I want to see this break themselves. Yeah, this one's not started, so that's good. That's the one that's good.
aside for a moment is this is the other one. You can see that it was done. This is the one here, the one that I just opened. This is the older one. I think it's older. It's more beat up anyway. Is they do look they do look identical. Okay. And the reason I'm I'm looking at this is that the one that came in this kit is broken off here. And this one is intact. And I wanted to make sure that I could take this older one, even though it's a different color, I don't care because I'm going to be painting the outside, is I want to make sure that it is compatible. And except for it being kind of warped, and it looks like it's exactly the same size. So I'll be able to take this one that's not broken and combine it with the base, the, this other kit is not broken on the bottom, but I can put it on the base because this base for the other one was broken. So this is where having the two kits comes together and it works okay. So this, these two are going to end up being together, even though they come came from different times and places. And it doesn't matter. The color is sort of different. Um, but they're going to be painted. It's going to be painted so that isn't going to be an issue. Other, and yeah. And this is going to be trash because it's busted. So I'll put this back in the other kit. Now we know we have a complete kit. at least as far as the uh, hall goes out of those two. And it looks like this has almost, it should have almost all the pieces. What I'm curious about here is the instructions. Yeah, there, see? That's where the spring goes, and there's a spring in this one. Yay, and the hatch works. Yeah, I love this. It's just, they have all this detail on the reactor, right? You know, you can see the inside of the reactor. You can see the coils, because they did a cutaway kind of thing. And it just says red, painted red, you know, here. You get all this detail on the hatch, painted green, except for the fire extinguishers on top, which are red, but it doesn't say anything about the bottom. Oh, here's the parts list. Great, 124 parts. And that doesn't include the duplicates, like the two sailplanes or the three radar support tubes or the six crew members sleeping. Oh, okay. I was looking for this. This is the inside. There is this grommet thing that attaches to both of those rudders. We've got the rudder planes. And so somewhere in one of the kits is this little thing that holds them together. So this is kind of a pain to glue together. Okay. Oh, they, they helpfully show you where to put the cement. They put you, give you a little blue, blue thing, blue spots here and here where you glue the hull onto the stand. That's yeah, kind of cool. But yeah, so the rudders go into either side. You put tiny drops of cement on this thing that holds it together, okay? And then you put this holder of the propeller with a tiny drop of cement there because it's supposed to rotate. And then cement here, here, and here, and it all has to go together at exactly the same time, because you can't, I mean, you can do this part here. You could probably put that into the propeller and set that into the socket, but you can't cement the rudders into this, maybe on one side. No, that's how I would do it. Is that get one side cemented in and then uh, cement the other side in when those two are put together. So that's supposed to be the final assembly. 
I don't know, the people who did the other kit did that as first assembly. Here's the no-show cement technique. The ultimate and authentic detail, and there is an awful lot of detail that they tell you to just paint over with a red or tan or something. Um, wow, they used a lot of adjectives here. Includes special cementing surfaces, which were really tiny and obviously didn't work on the other one. With our unique assembly drawings, uh, you feel that our efforts will be amply rewarded. If I ever got around to actually building this, as opposed to just talking about it, with a clean, durable, quality scale model of superior craftsmanship. I think they're talking about the craftsmanship of the model and not of the model maker. So this kit looks like it might mostly be here, which is pretty neat. <laughs> And I'm going to put these, I mean, not, not the original plastic bag, but, but there's a part that just fell off, right? I'm going to put these back in here so that when they do fall off, they will fall inside the bag, even though this box, this particular box, is not all torn up. Yeah, there's a tree with nothing in it. So it looks like I'm maybe missing one torpedo. If I were to empty all of this out and spread it around. But that's going to be easy to scavenge off of the other model if I need to. And what I want to be particularly careful about is to not break any more blades and put that propeller. Yeah. So somewhere, here it is. And that's held on by, yeah, you can see how that got broke, how people break it, is that they, they try to twist and snap that off the tree. Yeah, let me take this out again and show you. These things were broken before they were ever put on. Okay, because <clears throat> there's a, a little piece of plastic on the tree holding the hub, and there's another one holding the blade, and the blades obviously are very um, delicate. So when you twist this off, you're almost certain to just snap that blade off before it comes off the tree. But fortunately, it looks like I'll be able to salvage this propeller because the part's there, and... I can put it back and then just sand it and file it down so the glue doesn't show. And luckily, um, I have a model with the part that's busted. I probably could cement this back on, but I'm not sure if the hint would work. I'm, well, if I find the part that broke off, if that's in here somewhere, I probably will give that a try because the... Um, Let's see how these fit. These are hinged together, so they don't, they're not cemented, so they don't come together kind of identically. But the other one's a little bit warped. Okay, the other one's a little bit warped, and this one, this one fits better. Although that, I can just warm up a little bit and, you know, the side's going to be down anyway. You know, the side is just going to be down anyway, and I'll be painting it on the inside and the outside, so there's that. I'm going to leave these out. And another baggie. So, yeah. Since this is a D&D &D show, I'm supposed to be spending my time painting 
figures for the Dungeons and Dragons campaign. I'm putting these little bits that have come off the tree into this baggie. Um, yeah, I'm supposed to be doing things for the D and D campaign, which I will again starting on. Starting on Wednesday after those little mini figs are primed. But today, this is something I really wanted to do for a while. When I retired, I thought I'd be spending my time doing a bunch of modeling. And then I ended up not. But here's an opportunity to do that. Like even the inside of the hall has details, okay? Like, here in the control room there's dials and stuff and pipes on the wall that that really should be painted and highlighted so what i think i'm going to be doing if i when i actually ever really get around to putting this model together is um i'm going to prime this whole thing both both inside and outside because i'm going to be painting the hull this plastic is it's really not very good really um and there there's a nice gray paint black gray paint that we've been using that would look beautiful on this but i'm going to prime the inside of this because as i paint the inside green or tan okay all of these highly specified uh, authentic colors okay i'm going to want the paint to adhere and i'm going to try to get some a lot of this detail done one way or another like these pipes should show and not just be covered by the paint and these ladders probably should be a different color. There's even a railing on the outside of the sail that should be highlighted. Um, but yeah, that's... Uh... Oh, I took this torpedo out of the baggie because I wanted to try... I, I want to see what happens. Break the paint off. The silver they used isn't bad, but they didn't prep the model. Okay, there's a mold mark on there, and, and it's taking it off. So I think since the silver on there is laying, you know, yeah, the mold mark shows it was painted over, but I don't know what kind of paint they used. But it isn't. It isn't even scraping off. But this is the kind of thing you need to do with a model like that, where the mold mark shows, is that needs to be scraped off or sanded down so that when you paint it, it doesn't have a seam on it, okay? Your torpedoes don't have seams along their sides. Yeah, but, okay, so the silver... The, the silver just scrapes off pretty well. Most of it's coming off. And I think this bit here, that's not a mold mark. That's that's the little peg where you're supposed to put your invisible cement where it goes into the rack. But with some care, the silver paint does, does in fact, scrape off. So if I want to do that, I might use, I might try some steel wool or some sandpaper on it or something. Doesn't, you know, I'm not sure what I want to do around the tail fins, but if worse comes to worse, I can just um, prime it. Like all the little, little tiny pieces and things really should be primed because otherwise the paint might not adhere like I did with the fink. A lot of that paint just scrapes off with a, with a light touch. Anyway, yeah, depending on what I find with the other model in terms of being able to salvage those torpedoes, even though most of these have been painted, started painted, I can get them down to the raw plastic. You know, it's just boring. I won't do this on 
I won't be doing this on the stream because it'll be really, uh, you know, not that much fun to watch, but yeah. We can clean that off with probably a little sandpaper. So that'll be okay. The other thing I wanted to do since I'm just messing around with this a little bit, to see how much of this message, how much of this uh, kit could be saved is this, this one bulkhead, which has painted this hideous green. I want to see if this comes off. And if so, how easily you get bear with me just a minute while I get an abrasive. Really fine. Really fine, probably more more finer than I need. But I want to see if I if I rub this paint, what happens to it. So I'm, I'm guessing that if I need to reuse this one bulkhead, it looks like uh, I'll be able to use some some fine grit sandpaper and level it because whatever whatever enamel is used on here. Look at that, you know, the, you can see the variation in the gloss and that's a variation in the thickness is I probably can clean up enough of it and prime it without losing much detail. Like the door, the door even has a handle on it that needs to be painted a different color so you can see it. And whatever these things are, I think those are lights, maybe some sort of lamps, but there's only this one bulkhead that is that's painted, which is nice. And I'll be able to reuse this one way or the other. These were supposed to be painted red, it said, but it's not. Okay, so I can get, I can, between these two kits, so far it looks like I should be able to put one together, but um, I bought a third one, and let's open that and see what we got. I don't have to use it. I would just assume not. But if I do, here it is. This is a later reissue. They named it the Ethan Allen, but it's the same kit, except now it's 25 inches long instead of 24. This one, we have instructions. That's good. That's a good start. Um, we have another plastic bag, but we also have, um, we have an assembled tail. This one, was done, yeah, you know for sure, see that blade is broken off, that when they popped it off, they popped it off of the sprue of the tree, that's the one that was attached, and they just broke it off instead of cutting it off, and that's the blade that's broken. Um, this was not badly assembled, it actually works. Um, I have one that's unassembled, so let's see if that's any better. This is done in a different color plastic altogether. Okay. We've got down here. What we have is somebody started this along a little further than the other ones. Okay. Because there's, oh yeah. That's definitely green. So they decided to put all of the bulkheads green, even though many of them are not are labeled not green. Okay. Very glossy. 
um, and wrinkly, so they brushed that on. <laughs> Started to put together the torpedoes on the racks, tan and silver, didn't bother painting the warheads red. Okay, the stand is not broken. That's something. There's the blade. That was important. Here's the blade that they snapped off. So that propeller can be repaired if necessary. If I need to go to this chip, if I can't get the other two to work together, it looks like there's, you know, some torpedoes and here's the missile. Have your Poseidon, Poseidon missile for them. Some of the tubes for the for the snorkel and periscope for the sail. These are come off. They've started taking some of the things off. Probably a bunch of things are off. You can see it in here. A lot of stuff is off the. But there's also a lot of it in here. So it looks like this could be a go-to emergency place for pieces that might be missing if I can't get them out of the other two kits. And I'm guessing yeah, this is the torpedo room probably because they managed to paint the bunks gray instead of white. Very poor painting. Glossy paint, that should not be glossy. Um, but what I'm interested in is the hull. The hinges on this are still good. Okay, so worst comes to worst. I can use this one. And I'm not sure why it's an inch longer. Let me see how this fits together. You put these together and it's a, it's exactly the same mold as the other as the other ones were but they advertise it now as being 25 inches long instead of 24. maybe that's to get me to buy the new one yeah these whole pieces they're they're supposed to be, supposedly they'll hinge together but they don't fit very well so this one as I'm messing around with it, um, it's even more poorly than the very first kit. And again, it, it doesn't much matter that much because you're not going to show it hinged. You're going to show it un unhinged, unhinged like that, right? I just wanted to see if it was, if they mashed up and they do. So this kit has, you know, I'm going to empty out that bag and get the little parts, all the little loose parts, because this box is not in great shape either. Um, and put those into a baggie. But I'm looking at these and they are, there are tiny, there's some tiny little differences. There's one difference between the Ethan L and the later issue is right there. For some reason there isn't, there's a, an insert thing. I'm not sure what that's all about. But otherwise it looks like the mold is identical. And it's just the color of the plastic is different. Okay. So we know that now. What we know is that if I can't repair this, and I would like to because these two halves fit together as well as any, okay, if I can repair this and get it to work on the hinge, then I'm going to do that. 
to keep these together. Otherwise, I'll be able to use it from the other model. But the two George Washingtons are going to be the source for the material for these submarines. And the Ethan Allen is going to be a last resort go-to. Um, and if I don't have to use any of it, then I'll probably just try to resell it. Okay, so I'm going to go back to I'm going to go back to the George Washington two here. Let's see if there's any other little pieces in the box that need to go in the baggie. This one, this one is it was a very pleasant surprise. It looks like so much of it is still here. So little of it is painted with torpedoes, which I can deal with. And this green bulkhead is the only other thing that's painted green and that I can I can fix that just by paying a lot of attention to it, but nothing's cemented together even poorly. We're gonna put this back in here. And then when I get around to building this, I'm going to be starting with this one. Okay, I'll be starting with the instructions from the other one because that one has instructions. I'm going to be starting with this this model, and I'm going to get this. Um... <laughs> yep, there it is. Okay. I'm going to put this back together. Two. And now I'm going to take a look at what are we dealing with here with this Ethan Allen. The instructions are here. Here's this wonderful 124 item parts list. Wow. Okay. This is really neat. Um, so if for some reason one of your sailplanes was broken or missing, you could order it. You could actually back then. This is this is uh, this. I'm going to keep this because it's not in the other kit. But I'm going to I might keep this even though it's an Ethan Allen. Is that you can buy parts that were missing or damaged? Okay, and you have to order them on this form. You can't use stamps. People used to buy things with U.S. postage stamps. Seriously, it's like, oh, this part is a nickel. So I'd put a five cent stamp in the envelope to try to pay for it, but they don't accept stamps. Um, but if one of your standing men was missing, you could get a replacement part for a nickel, five cents. And um, bunks, the, each, the bunks were 15 cents. I'm trying to find the most expensive part. Yep, the hull, the big hull on either side, those are 50 cents each. Nothing was less than a nickel, the coffee urn. There's a coffee urn in here, it was a nickel. The meat, well, I didn't look for it, but somewhere, remember there was a the hanging hams? The meat was a nickel. I'm guessing that if we sent it to Renwall products in Mineola, New York, and there's no zip code even, so that tells you something, that um, I probably wouldn't be able to get the parts. It's pretty cool. 
Okay. Anyway, that's pretty cool. And the instructions are in good shape. Yeah. And the, uh, I just love these assembly is the instructions is you have all this detail, right? On the mechanical parts. And it just says white paint it white. Paint the racks for the torpedoes tan. Just no detail. I think maybe these would have come with maybe even paint kits with six different colors on it. There's even a place, these are the cementing areas, but there are special no show cementing points where you put the cement after the parts are assembled and then there are hidden cement areas like along here these hidden cement areas are where the i'm not quite sure what you're supposed to do with a hit with when it's hidden um but that's where the the edge of the that bulkhead once it's assembled with the torpedoes Okay, once it's, the bulkhead is put together, that goes on like that. Yeah. So these are the Ethan Allen instructions. They're, they're in pretty good shape. The rest of the model is meh. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see what, what we've got in here in terms of parts. There's a lot of loose parts inside the bag. So this suggest that maybe things might have been lost. So I'm going to take the ones that still have parts on them and put them back in the bag. Here's the snorkels and periscopes, so those are intact. I don't know why people do that. You know, they get these model kits and the, then they start snapping the parts off, which is really just some tables, you know. And again, it's pretty clear that this is exactly the same model kit as the others. There's a bunch of chairs. There's all the chairs are here and there's mold marks on all of them. Because people get these kits and the first thing you do is they start snapping the parts off the trees. Then you there's two bad things that happen with that. One is you can't tell, you know, they're all numbered, right? So you can't tell where they came from unless you match everything up again. But when you snap them off, um, you, you distort them because you can like break off part of the thing where you snapped it off. The, the detail sheet is not in good shape. Um, you can see sometimes if you snap it off and the, the plastic stays on the part, this bunk, you can sand that off or scrape it off, but sometimes it breaks off in two and then you've got to dip it. So that's this, I don't know, like why break off all of these things? Okay, this is good. This, this spring is here. Make sure we save that. Do this and see what's here. But you know, and then you break off all the parts, and then you can't tell which part is which because it's not attached to the number anymore. And if you break it off, you can distort the piece that you're working with. then it doesn't look as good as it should. You know, that's where they that's where the propeller was attached. And you can see that that they, it snapped off, right? The blade snapped off. Unlike the other kit, no way out well, they started painting the periscopes without dealing with the mold marks. That's where all the torpedoes used to be. Okay, so I think that's all of that. Now all we've got left are loose parts. So we're going to do a quick inventory. You 
Yeah, not not enough torpedo tubes. So those got lost somehow. And uh, one, the one where the spring goes in is definitely not here. So unless I missed it on the trees there, it looks like that got lost somehow. And here's some tables, torpedoes attempted to be cemented to the very bright tan. Well, that's tan, right? Get your testers model cement, and that's tan. And there they are. It looks like torpedoes are missing. It's a little table. We don't have the blade for the propeller. So. Keeping the one in the other kit is going to be important. Hopefully it stays in the baggie. Missile. So the only thing I'm seeing that's really good in this kit is that um, there's another spring for the missiles. And I'm not going to take anything out of here and use it unless I really need to as I'm working with the other ones, because uh, this is, this got started, little pieces are missing. Um, painting is not good. But there might be a few pieces in here, like I might be missing a staircase. Okay, and under the other models, and I can come back here and try to pull it together. Um, the tail with the fins is assembled, but not in terribly bad shape. It's missing one of the propeller blades, and it's not just laying about, so it probably got lost. Okay. That's missing. But if worse came to worse, um, I could probably take one off of the very first George Washington, where there's still two intact, cut one off and, and reassemble it if I needed to, if I couldn't put it together from the other one. Yeah, I'm going to take this box back here again. To keep these because sometimes you need to fashion a part just start from scratch and build your own part and uh, this is the same plastic and there's chunks of it so sometimes that's an important thing to do i'm just taking the big pieces out put the little pieces like the little guy and these missile tubes i'm going to put those in the hole here and transfer them to baggy. Oh, look, look, there it is. There it is. There's the missing, just like the other one. There's the propeller blade that broke off. You definitely want to keep that. Here's some torpedoes. And so if I'm missing a torpedo and I can't get one off of the other George Washington, I can always scavenge one here. But you can see here, I mean, it's so obvious that there are mold marks on this. See how there, it's like it's almost got fins all along the body. Is, you know, if you're gonna be a serious about the model, what you do is you get an X-Acto knife and scrape that off, or a razor blade, or even just some sandpaper and clean that off because otherwise it just looks, looks really crappy. But it was really cool to find the, the uh, color blade. So what I know for sure is that, ah, there's the one that's, huh, okay, let's see if they did it. Yep, yep, this goes down. Okay, this is how this works. This one actually is okay if I need to. The spring is already in there. 
So apparently they gave us an extra spring is it slides down and over. Okay. See where that goes over. And if you flip that up, it will, you know, and you get the clearances, right? Because these are just little plastic pieces. Comes down, compresses the spring and it slides over. And then you're supposed to uh, flip that up and it'll shoot the missile like that high. And it's cool to find that. Yep. So definitely, definitely among the three kits, one way or the other, one way or the other, if I ever got around to actually working on this model, which I promised Nikki and Alexis I would not do on the stream because this is supposed to be, you know, like Dyson Dungeons, not submarines. Well, if I actually got around to doing this, uh, I will be able to get one complete one out of these three kits and maybe even out of two. Yeah, so you've got like the detail on this. It's amazing. These are the, this is in the torpedo room. Okay. And these are the hatches and there's all of this detail of fire extinguishers and dials. You know, the dials, the, not only do you have the face on the dial, but you've actually got pointers on them. On this one, and num you can't really see numbers, but it's highly detailed. This hatch is open, so a torpedo, theoretically, you could set it up so that a torpedo was like partially in the tube, okay? And maybe if I build this, I'll actually do that, is to partially insert a torpedo into that hole. Why not? That's why it's there, right? But all of this detail here is molded on and the instructions say green and then you do that and it just all turns shiny green where you get this thing with this control panel down here it's got all sorts of displays and dials and stuff on it it's green so yeah here's another one where you've got controls and dials and things. So one could spend the better part of a day, I mean, just forever, trying to get the detail on here, putting little bits of white paint on, trying to paint the dial with maybe probably a pen. You know, it's too fine even for a brush. It's just attempting to make this look cool. It could take quite a while. Okay, so this is one difference between this model and the others in that um, the hinge, the hinge is different for the hatch. The other ones open this way. Longitudinally, this hatch on the Ethan Allen opens sideways. So this is incompatible with the other models, at least in terms of how the top of the hatch works. This goes on to the glued on side. Okay, this will go on here like this. And then when the hinged part comes up, it hinges over that, over that like that. So that's one change they made um, on the models is that the the hinge for the missiles is different on the Ethan Allen than on the others. All the interior stuff looks exactly the same. So that means that definitely, as I put this together, sometime in some other lifetime, um, that I can't use, I can't use the hull pieces or at least I can't use the hinged hull. So I have to make make sure that I can get the, uh, either repair that one that was broken on the hinge so that it works, or at least holds on. 
or um, that I get the two to work together. So what we've got then is a busted up box. I'm gonna inspect that thing, a full pile of pieces that I'm gonna put in this baggie, of the loose pieces, including the propeller blade. Ethan Allen to rest, and Ethan Allen will be used only in an emergency. Only in an emergency. If I can't get the parts I need from the other two models. But we know it's there, and the parts list is cool. It's a cool thing to have. And if I try to resell this on eBay, you know, for a small amount of money, because it's, you know, as is, not inventory, looks like there's a lot of parts, good luck. That's how it was sold to me. Then, um, yeah, I need to use a couple of parts from here. It'll just be as is, that's the way it is. So it's time for a break. And when I come back from the break, I'm not quite sure what I'll do. Um, I'll look around and see. But thanks for bearing with me as I opened up the submarine boxes and found out what was in them and discovered that, yes, indeed, it will be at least theoretically possible to turn those two kits, the two George Washington kits, into one complete Renoir um, visible submarine. And that if absolutely necessary, I can scavenge a couple of the interior parts, not the hull, but the interior parts from the Ethan Allen. Well, yeah, that was really actually dusty. Those models were filthy. Going to take a break now. I'll be back in like 15 to 20 minutes. Just to see how the dogs are doing and all of that. Hope you will stay with us and we'll see what happens next. <laughs>
back from break. So just to recap, uh, what we're doing here today is filling in a little bit of time while uh, we're waiting for the latest production of mini figs to be primed. So those will get primed either today or tomorrow. In the interim, I had brought out these wonderful, authentically vintage Renwall nuclear subs. These were the first uh, Poseidon firing uh, missile submarines. And the way these work is that there's a double hull and part of it folds down like it shows here, okay? It hinges and it comes down and it shows the interior of the sub. And I built one of these when I was a kid when they first came out. And um, when I retired, I wanted to, you know, relive some of that experience. So uh, I couldn't find a model that was complete and unstarted. So I bought a couple of them that uh, had shown some, you know, some wear and tear. Parts had come off of the sprues and some parts were painted. In one case, they were even started to be glued together. And so I bought a couple of kits and this was one of them. And as I had gone before the break, this one was unpainted, which was nice, but had started to be glued together. The torpedo room is the first part. And they decided, whoever was doing this, that, you know, they didn't really feel like painting, so they didn't. And so this one is unpainted, but is cemented. And there's a possibility, some possibility, that I might be able to break these off, take them apart, and reuse the parts. And there's... There's a whole bunch of loose parts, and I think a lot of pieces actually missing of this particular kit. Not really sure, but potentially missing and broken. But um, what's important is that the hinges aren't broken here. So I also bought a second one. Earlier. It's in really bad shape. But the cover's in good shape, so there's that. Sort of a mix and match thing. You know, the color, the cover is torn here, but this one is intact, but it has tape damage. So this one is the same model. When I got this one open, the instructions are actually to the other one. Uh, the hole is a different color. The hinge is broken. I'm not sure if I'll be able to fix that or not. But most of it was unstarted. Like, this isn't started at all. So, other than the bulkhead, this is the very front one that goes here. I'll just put together that's the one that goes there. Other than this being started... Um, and some torpedoes being painted silver. This one's pretty much unstarted. And it looks like a lot of the pieces are here. And they're interchangeable. So if I can't repair the hinge on this one, I'll be using the outside hull of the other one. It's a different color, but I'm going to be painting them anyway. And uh, if worse comes to worse, I'll just, like sand down the rough parts, the unevenness of the paint here. And I'm going to be priming all this stuff anyway. Um, the propellers tend to get broken because of the way they're attached to the trees. The propeller on this one is broken, but I found the blade. So I should be able to repair that. And the tail of it, the other tail is started and it's just a mess. The fins are broken, the propeller is broken. It got Whoever did it didn't know what they were doing and glued it together. I'm pretty sure that between these two kits, I'll be able to put one together that's in good shape. And if I can't, if for some reason I'm not able to do that, I have a third kit. The exterior is different. It's a later model. It's the Ether, Ethan Allen. And so the hatches for the missiles are different. 
the, the hatches here open longitudinally with the submarine. The later model open from the side. Anyway, I can't use the hull, but um, I should be able to piece it together from these two, either through a repair or through a uh, swapping out. So between these two kits, I'm going to have one complete Renoir blueprint, George Washington Polaris launching nuclear sub. Now, what I put when I put this together as a kid, I followed the painting instructions. Okay, let me just show you that again, All right, just to give you an idea. The painting instructions say, see this? Painted green. And so it's all painted green, but there's detail on it. Like there's a dial, okay, and there's stairs leading up to a hatch. And there's actually a hatch with a handle on it. And the handle would have been painted red, probably. And the rim of the door would have been painted a different color so you could see it. And these lights would have been white underneath because they're lights, right? And probably a metallic or something on the top. So there's incredible detail on parts of these models, especially like in the, the control room and the engine room. There's consoles with dials and buttons and lights and things like that. They're the inside of the hull, and you can show you the side that things get glued into, has piping and control panels and things. And those just all get lost if you follow the painting instructions and it says green or tan or something like that. And it, it just disappears. So unlike when I was a kid and I just painted them that, I'm actually going to make an effort to paint some of the detail, like on these control panels okay, or the periscopes or the ladders that you can see almost everywhere. Even uh, the tabletops get messed up. There's lockers. They can paint the, the rim of the locker so you can see the doors and the handles and things on them. So there's a huge amount of really fine detail that would otherwise get lost in building this kit um, if, you really weren't, if you weren't paying attention to all of that. So, if I ever get around to doing this, and I probably will not be doing it on this screen because I've been told this is a Dyson Dungeons, Dungeons and Dragons sort of thing. Um, yeah, it's just going to take forever. Take forever to get it done right. Hey, that's all I've got is time, right? Anyway, I'm going to set that aside. And um, what I want to do is show you some of the things that we've been working on for Dyson Dungeons and some of the things I'll be starting to work on sooner than later. And I'll start with the soon to be worked on. I have a new rosin printer and the rosin printer has been working hard and has produced, I'm not gonna show you all of them, but I can show you some of them, many figs of just the right size for our D&D campaign. And so you got things like this fire caster um, a, like a sorcerer with, you know, really finely detailed hair and um, fire in her hand. You got this guy who looks pretty evil with a dagger that uh, is being held in a way that's not at all threatening, at least to us, but, you know, symbolic kind of thing. You've got a leader, a warrior leader, and she's pointing out into the distance saying, uh, yeah, soldiers attack. I'm here right behind you with my sword pointing. So you go do that. Okay. And I'll, I'll wait here and show you where to go by pointing at it. And there's, um, another magic user, maybe, uh, maybe a Druid with a staff. She might be a druid. I'm not sure. Another nature sort of thing with a staff. Anyway, these came off the rosin printer and they need to be primed. 
and after they are primed, then I will be able to paint them. And I think they are all ready to go, except there's one, there's one mini fig, this guy here, whose uh, sword, pretty clearly there was a, there's the hilt, should be holding a kind of a curved katana-like blade, and it didn't print. So one of the things I might do, and I've done this before, is I fabricated the sword out of a toothpick, which is fairly easy to do, you know, it's nice soft wood, is I can match it up nicely with the scabbard so I know the shape that it's going to take. In fact, yeah, I might even work on that today. That would be a thing to do, is fabricate a sword that matches the scabbard that can then just be epoxied to that. And no one will know the difference because, as I said, I've actually accomplished that before with a dual wielder. Um, and it and it came out it, I mean, really quite well. So let me look at this in a little more detail. Yeah, I think that um, I think that that's what's supposed to be happening here, and that this it just didn't finish for some reason. And when I'm looking at this sword here. There's this little lump on it, so there's just. There's tiny little flaws in the print, and I'm going to spend a little bit of time in fixing those. Take this exacto knife and cut toward me. You know that's an important thing to do, and just get that little bit off without breaking it. So that um, when this is painted, the sword doesn't have a wart. And making a sword out of a toothpick, like I said, I've done that before and it turned out really well. So I think I'm going to try that today. And so I'm going to work on, on replacing that blade that apparently didn't get printed. Here, this is coming out pretty well. Nice soft plastic. I'm going to move this down back to where it usually is when I'm painting. I had it up higher so that we could show off as much as possible of that, uh, those submarine models that I'm not working on, but I wanted to show them to you. Doing the unboxing live on Dice and Dungeons, you know, opening them up, seeing what was there. Most of it, especially George Washington, too. George Washington 1 wasn't terribly much of a surprise. You could see that it had been started already. The, the only good thing about it was that the glue that they used was so terrible <clears throat> that parts of it just kind of fell apart. And maybe the torpedo room will be the same. But George Washington 2, when I first opened it, it was like, oh, this, this is like half of it's missing, but it looks like it's actually pretty well intact, and as such, will actually be when I start working on it, that'll be the starting point. Okay, so I fixed that. I'm going to uh, take the time to look these over, and if there's little, little mold marks or something, I'm going to take care of those before priming. I don't know that they've been there. Sometimes after, you know, you don't see them, but when you paint them, then they show up. Okay, and then there's some ambiguous things, like this is a satchel, and that looks like a like a lump, but it isn't. Um, that's just, that's part of the cover that comes out. That's detail. Wow, the detail on this on these prints you don't get any mold marks that you do if they were just mass produced. The fingers on the hands, just amazing detail on these uh, rosin printer, rosin printed pieces. And these even are the most detailed models. I mean, some of them are even more detailed. These are more than enough for me, though, in terms of 
the challenge they will present while being painted. Maybe I'll do somebody like this. Okay, this this one I can do. I can do, you know, the robe and then put a wash on it to highlight the, the, the contours. One of the color combinations I've liked in the past is uh, using a really light blue and then using the blue wash to not change color, but to, to highlight the folds in the garments. So this, this guy might have like a sky blue cloak, okay, with a blue wash on it and then a belt, which is going to, yeah, nicely right underneath the dagger. That's, that's really helpful. That inside of the sleeves and things, um, you know, getting a face right in the detail of the face and the inside of the cloak, paint that black so that it looks like shadows. So I could do that. Or he could be like a monk and I could paint this like a tan, a tan color or a buff and use a, a brown wash on it to show the folds in the robes. So I'll have to ask if they want this to be a sky blue kind of wizard guy or a tan. There's two of them. I don't know, I called it a wizard, but looks like a magic user. It's definitely not a fighter. So I'll ask which, I'll ask the powers that be what color they would like that to be. This one's really detailed. There's a multi-layered um, cloak and a wrap around a dagger on the side. It's kind of interesting and fun. This is the one who needs a sword. Those aside, and I'll show you all of them. I'm just cleaning these up before priming them. It's two of these, these warriors. They've got, you know, it's not too bad. It's got armor that needs to be. Uh, base coated and then probably washed a little bit to show some of the detail. Um, sword, it's nice to have a helm on because then they don't have faces to paint. They don't have to worry about eyes and noses and mouths. So maybe I'll take these guys on early on. Then I can use metallics with a light wash. And yeah, that would be pretty much all, all that needs to be done. I just need to paint the pouches and then some sort of flamboyant cloak. Yes, it, these have nice folds in them too. So those could even be like red, scarlet red with a light with a light wash on it. Could even use the, the blue the blue wash on the red. That might give it an interesting kind of iridescence. And as I've said with models like this before, you can paint the cloak <clears throat> like scarlet red or one of the lighter reds and put the blue wash on it, show off the folds and to give it an interesting kind of two color, bicolored look to the fabric. And if it doesn't look good, well, you get the spray primer out and just cover it over, start again. So those, these guys might be might be figures that I do earlier on. Okay, this one, there's a little bit of a note here that just comes right off. So Alexis would probably say, well, I'm just gonna, this is like a ninja guy. I'm just gonna reprint it, don't, don't bother. But, you know, why not? Why not make a sword out of a toothpick? replicate a success I had before. This one, this is a magic user with a flame in its hand. You can see, hold it up against the white so you can see the detail of the flame. It's really amazing. Now it'll be interesting to paint because I've done flames before, but they've been kinds of flames to get in a trap that burn these guys, not the kind of flames that are in the hand, but the same, you want the same color combination pretty much, um, but just much smaller. Uh, so there, 
those are these are some of the mini figs that had just recently been printed and there's there's um get them primed and then i can start painting real dungeons and dragons things again and the kinds of things we've done in the past you know are the dungeon tiles like this is our our wood one isn't that cool it's uh, wood with stucco walls and we use those for inns and taverns and warehouses and things for a warehouse or a tavern you might have you might even have a secret door okay and we have a, a working trap door that needs to be scraped some of the black paint underneath but that needs to be you know, put together somehow and it looks like looks like it's There's hinge pins, but there aren't any hinge holes. So I'm not quite sure how we're going to do that. That's probably why it's sitting here. It's waiting to be modified. Anyway, yeah, that's pretty cool, isn't it? So you can have a working trap door and go down into the, the abyss down below. And we do stone. This is an example of one of the stone ones. This is rough stone. We also have cut stone, which looks more like, uh, anyway, they're very clean blocks in the floors and they're uh, more are like tiled floors, kind of. And so this is what they look like when they've been washed. Just to show you that, we wash these with a gray wash and you can see when you base coat them, they look pretty nice, but they really, they come alive when you put the wash on it, it darkens it some. It highlights the mortar joints, makes the floors look a little bit worn. Okay, so there's there's a couple here that need to be washed sometimes. And then we do accent pieces. Like we have trap tiles. And I won't show you all of it, but there's a wall that comes off and uh, these are magnetically attached. And it's just, just a one tile wide corridor. And you can either trigger a flame trap or a gas cloud trap okay. so those are cool little features that you can get and there's other you know scatter stuff like these uh these which is you know it can be a bar can be a merchant's table you know, all sorts of things that potentially that could be you know so these are pretty easy to put together you know, it's just base coated, either the wood or that. And then, uh, you know, you have to be a little careful with the, the painting of these things, but they, they're they they're pretty cool things to have. One of our sets has a giant bronze cauldron, brass cauldron in it. And these, this too can work with the flame. If you've got like a fire mage, okay, you can have a flame that comes out in the cauldron. Um, if some alternatives would be like water, so it'd be a fountain, would be blue and white, um, could be air, and it would be very light blue and white, like probably close to the gas cloud, or it could be earth, and it could just be like well, stalactites, stalag stalagmites coming up. So we've, we've done the one with the flame the fire mage and the walls actually have flame sigils on them but we also have the other three elements as well and those are available as will be available as options okay so you could buy the fire mage set and then could potentially get another set with alternative sigils and a different um, thing coming up out of the cauldron so there's that. Now, since I've got a little more than an hour left, I probably won't take that much time. I am going to take a toothpick. This has been used. Okay, got some paint on it. It doesn't much matter, but I'll get a clean one just just to do it. Is I want to get I want to get it like this, and so because there's a little curve on it. Okay, what I'm going to do is take it from the thicker part. This is about the right 
with. I don't know. Is it easier to see against the dark? I guess it is, even though it's all splotchy with paint and stuff. That's another story. So this was painted a really light gray color, kind of a bluish, whitish gray. And it didn't show up that well on screen. And so Alexis said, well, you know, if we're going to be streaming this, we want a workbench that shows better contrast. So we got this nice gray paint. And, um, well, it's been used. Look. Right? So it might be getting time, if we can ever clear everything off, which will be a chore, to clear everything off and repaint it because we still have the paint. So here, I mean, it's got a curve in it. On the, in the scabbard. So we want a curve in the sword that's fabricated. So I can't use this part of it because if it's straight, we can see that the curve doesn't get in. But if I use this thicker part here, okay, and I like, start the blade here, I can carve it around so that it has a curve to it. And that shouldn't be too terribly difficult to do. So I'm going to like cut it off here and then start shaping it. And it's a little thick, but it's easy. I can get some sandpaper once I have the shape. Okay. I can get some sandpaper and thin it off. And not a very long blade. Started about here and then gradually try to shape it. Right, that worked. Mm. Blade came loose. <laughs> A little vice on the tip of this is very, this blade is really thin, it's very tight. Try to get this at an odd angle, but it'll do for what I'm doing. Okay. So we're going to keep playing with the exacto knife here until so tolerable. Okay. So I'm going to leave this longer than I need it. And I'm going to, what I want it to do is get smaller here, because it's a fairly small blade, is cut this off here, like this, and then curve it. And you curve it there and then curve it from underneath. Using, using a toothpick because it starts out close to the size I want. And it's fairly soft. And I was able to do this once before, which was nice. And I'm going to use this knife to rough rough shape it and then i'm going to let's see i think that might still be okay um use sandpaper to do the fine shaping Starting to get the curve on it, but I want to see the length of it. It ends about here. I'm not going to cut that off. Okay, but I'm going to shape up to it. You know, you want the curve to be distinct enough so that you can actually see it. 
when you're looking at it on, on stream. So, believe it or not, it's actually pretty well rough shaped. Okay. The end of the blade being like about there. And let me get, get some, some sandpaper right back and get some sandpaper and I'm going to start shaping that. That's it. Um, pretty soft. Could respond to abrasives pretty well. And the last step in this whole process is going to be thinning it, okay? It's too wide. And if you look at, uh, let me find another sword blade. This is similar. You can see how thin that is. The wood will still hold its integrity, um, even if it's that thin. I know that because I've done it before. Um, but it's the last thing you do. Okay, not the first thing, because if it was that thin to begin with, I wouldn't be able to shape it. This is the bottom of the blade I'm doing here. You know, the convex part. I need to match the scabbard. So it's fairly straight and then it curves at the tip. Let's see if that's the right length. The tip of the blade would be about here. Or we could use like a little file, maybe a little file as well. I've got those, but the sandpaper seems to be, you know, emery paste cloth. That's what this is. Seems to be working in here. Well, after I get it to the rough shape, I'm going to shape it close to being final shape. Um, I'll thin it down so that it's the right thickness because it's way too thick. And then the, the last things I'll be doing is shaping the point of it. Because I, with it being attached like this, you can't really shape the point. Let's see how this is coming here. Um, yeah, it's actually not. That's actually not too bad. It's got a little bit of curve in it. And believe it or not, it will come to a point here. Up here, it's very. It's a very in blade so this needs to be sanded a little bit here on the top mm -hmm. 
looks like I should go the other direction and make this the pointy tip. Let's see if that'll work. Is uh, hold it this way. It's not curved quite enough, but it's not it's not bad either. So this is going to be the pointy tip here. I'm just going to finish that off. Point it up to the top of like that. It'll make it look more curved. See that? See the profile? How it swoops up a little bit as it comes to a point. It's kind of an illusion, uh, but that's okay. Let me see how I'm doing in terms of length. Actually, that's it's not too bad. So I want it to finish off right about there. But I'm going to thin it now because if you look at it from the top, even with the scabbard, you can see how thick that is. So I'm going to be doing this is uh, making it thinner this way. When you've got something like a 3D model and the part comes off, you don't have to toss the whole thing away. You can just get yourself some little pieces of wood or plastic. You could be doing this with soft plastic as well. It's, it's thinning and contouring pretty well. I do this with soft plastic as well as with wood, but I, you know, this toothpick is really easy to use, really easy to work with. And yeah, it's, I think that's coming along really quite well. I'm going to make it a little thinner right up here near the end of the blade, near the tilt part. So if you're looking at this, <clears throat> even from the top like that, you can see how the blade thins, or it goes like this, how the blade thins as you get near the point. And I could make it a little bit thinner. I might work at it just a little bit from the other side to round it off a little bit. But I don't want to make it too thin because then it'll just look weird. Um, <clears throat> epoxying this on is a little bit of a challenge because as you can see, there's not much to hold on to there. But, you know, with a matter, it's just a matter of like holding it for three minutes without wiggling your hand or anything. So this, this has got some of these, I mean, it's just, that's the part that didn't work. And then there's a little flat spot there. So what I'm going to be doing is I, I can cut that off, mix it some epoxy, and glue this blade on, hold it there forever until it um, sets. And then the blade is really close to matching. It does look like it needs to be a little thinner especially near the hilt. <laughs> I want it to look nice and straight because you're looking at it from the top. Okay, as he's holding it, it's from the top. So as I'm continuing to thin it, we don't want it to look like it's curved. But it looks pretty straight. Okay. 
here. I need to decide where to cut it. <clears throat> if we match it to the scabbard, it should be right there. There. Make it a little bit long because I might have to trim it a little bit. So what we have here is a replacement blade with a sword that didn't print. <clears throat> and if we look at it, here, <clears throat> I just need to you know, epoxy that on. And the epoxy will actually hold But it will take a huge amount of patience to say that. There's a tiny, I mean, it's just the tiniest little bit of um, contact point. Probably, I mean, one way to do this would be if I got some super glue and just touched it. The problem with that is it sets as soon as it's touched. Okay. And so if it was like off center a little bit or angled wrong, there'd be no way to fix it. But. <clears throat> Our replacement blade is is actually it's good with yeah, how that came in. <clears throat> Just need to decide if I'm gonna do that now. I could sit here and spend a good, you know, fair amount of time holding that while I talked about who knows what did I talk about while I'm doing it. Probably something I'd find something to chat about. So shall we uh, shall we try to put the blade on? Could probably put the blade on and prime it. And unless they watch this stream, uh, Nikki and Alexis would never know that I actually replaced the blade. Ah! But I didn't replace the blade. I totally, as I was doing. The last little bit sanding, the last little bit of sanding to get it perfect. The perfect is the enemy of the good. Okay, you ever heard of that? Well, the perfect was the enemy of the, this blade was just right and um, I broke it. I put it back together like that. Okay, this is what I'm gonna do. This is just really silly, but why not? is uh, I'm going to repair my fragmented blade, okay? I could just start over and build another one, but why do that when I can fix it? Because it was so good. And the pieces, if I get the pieces together just right, you can't, you can't see we can't see the break. And if it's epoxy together, it'll be stronger than ever. Or what I could do is quit messing with that and just pick a hit. What the heck? Just messed it up so badly. I'm just going to... Um, <clears throat> not learn my lesson at all, I did not learn my lesson very well, is try another, try it again. Maybe I'll have a, maybe I'll have a stronger toothpick this time. Maybe I won't say just one more little brush. 
with the sandpaper and it'll be perfect. And then it's not. Maybe I won't do that this time. Anyway, you saw how it could be done. <clears> how <throat> oh, it was possible to shape the blade using a little bit of carving and some sandpaper. You saw how that was a thing to do, how it could be thinned down so it was just the right thickness so that it would look just like the blade would have looked had it not, not fractured before or not, not fractured, it just failed to print. Okay, you saw that that was possible and then you saw how it's possible to um, destroy your work at the very end by trying to do just one last little bit of too much thing. Yeah, that was really, that was really frustrating and sad. So we'll see if we can't get another one that looks just as good or better. <clears throat> I'm going to do the shaping here. Curve the tip. To the tip, we're going to sand it here. Point is the point is on the inside there. Paper blade, and bring it up to a point here, or very close to the point. Yeah, this shakes really fast. This is that's good. Most of the swoop up in the curve is going to come from contouring the bottom. The bottom of the blade up. Thinning of the blade. You know, this is about the right thickness here. It's going to come from sanding it from underneath here. It was really something. I mean, seriously, it was like all ready to go. And I thought, okay, maybe I'll just thin it just as tiny as a little bit more. And then it just fra fractured all over the place. I'm going to leave this on here and then I'm going to thin it this way. Okay. And then I'm going to cut this off here and then shape the point. I want to make sure that the blade is uh, doesn't end up with a curve in it. When I look at it from the top, I want it to be straight. Doing a lot of point shaping once I cut it off.
you can compare it to this sword. See how much thinner it is? I'm not going to be able to get it that thin. But I'll be able to get it, you know, pretty close. That was just really something. The whole thing was done. <clears throat> And I broke it. I need a point. Get as much of that done before I take it off as I can. Okay, that's not bad. It's getting close. And I need to, it needs to be a lot thinner at the point. And I'll do that after I cut the tip off here. I want it to curve up. I'm going to do that here. And what I do is um, trying not to splinter it. That one. See, it's a decent curving in. It's a little bit more on the tongue. And then the uh, the point is thicker than the <clears throat> hilt side, so you know, just hold it on the hilt side. And paper down this way. Get it to a nice thin point that won't hopefully won't break off. If you look at it from the top, you want it to come to a point and it leaves a little bit more contouring from this direction. Yeah, that's that looks better. See, it comes to a point pretty well there. Maybe a little bit more. This is where it's a little bit more into it until it breaks, right? So there's the, the blade. The curves okay. Could use I need a little bit here. <laughs> sanding it without fracturing it, right? And it'd be nice if it curved. But not really seeing it from the side that much. I think this is pretty close to being done again. Let's see how it looks here. It's uh, close there, like that. Let's see if it's too, it's too long, isn't it? It's way too long. At least making it shorter is, yeah, it's okay if it is a little long, but it's much too long. Fortunately, making it shorter is a pretty straightforward process. Scabbard, it's a little longer than the scabbard, but you know what we're doing is looking at it from the top here, and I want to see if it's you want it to be. Look like it's kind of to scale. Still too long. Can't make it longer, so I'm not going to take a lot off. I think this, this should be good. Yeah, 
it's the same length as a scabbard now, so it should be, it should look pretty good in the hand. And I, I think it does. Anything, I would make it maybe a little bit thinner. That's kind of, that's kind of the, uh, okay, this is where we mess it all up kind of thing. But let's just see what we can do. Anything less than that, and I think it's just going to lose its integrity. Definitely getting thinner and thinner. And the paper takes this very soft wood, so it comes off quickly well you know that's better it's just it is just better um, take a little bit off the mid part of the blade then so there's that it's done again this one hasn't broken yet um i think i'm going to i'm going to try i'm going to try to mix up some a little little bit of epoxy here and um, hold it in place forever. You know, the thickness of the blade, it matches the scabbard pretty well. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to hold it on the tip. And I have to line it up with the hilt that way and this way. So that means holding it. like that forever but why not why not to uh, use the last few minutes of this stream to see if we can't in fact make this repair what could go wrong right need some non-absorptive pieces of paper Paper towel will just suck up the epoxy before it can get mixed. And I don't see any handy or anything like that. Use some, use the back of another sandpaper, I guess. Tear up a little more. <clears throat> so I'm going to mix this up, and it's five minute epoxy. And because I want it to set sometime within two or two minutes or so of when I am holding it, I don't feel like holding it for five minutes. I don't mind holding it for two minutes. You mix it up and let it sit for a few minutes. That's like 10 times more than I need, but that's what came out. I'll mix this up and I'm going to let it kind of set. And as you can see, the contact point there is minuscule. Be fragile. And uh, as I mentioned earlier on, probably a little, the tiniest touch of cyanoacrylate super glue would have been fine if I could be sure to get it attached perfectly at the very first touch, which would have been next to impossible to do too. Anyway, we have all these minifigs here. 
that I will put back on screen because they're pretty cool. These were done on the rosin printer, which is not the PLA printer. The printers, 3D printers you hear behind me are the ones that are used for printing the dungeon tiles. These guys, okay? And they come out, you know, really good detail, as you can see, like on here. All right, you get nice wood grain, you get nice texturing on the stucco. They're fairly easy and straightforward to paint. But that's what's going on back there. But these mini figs are on the new rosin printer, which is designed to produce high definition little figures. And kind of the epitome of it is this beholder. It's much bigger. Okay. Totally different scale. That was done and printed a weekend ago. On, I mean, you can just, you, you, and you're familiar with these printers. You've seen the, either you have one of yourself or you've purchased things that were done on them. But the detail, including all, you know, the overhangs and things like that are really pretty amazing. This is something that I'm going to let Nikki paint. She is exceptional at shading, you know, because there's all of these scales and things and like wrinkles here around the face that even though they're not painted different colors need to be shaded and the inside of the mouth, even that has, even that's in perfect detail. Um, yeah, so she's really good at that. And so we'll be able to get these eyeball tentacles painted down inside there, you know, in between them, get different shading on them, maybe even, maybe even do something with a little bit of, um, fluorescent paint. You know, it's just something I, I am not very steady at or well she's a trained artist and i'm not but i can do guys like this okay and the big decision is are they blue gray robed or are they tan brown robed let's see how this is coming it's starting to get a little sticky i mean tack tacky Hold it this direction. I'm going to get the epoxy on the end of the knife blade. And there will be a little bit of a lump there because the epoxy will spread out. But that's also where the hilt is. So I'm going to figure this small, with that, this kind of detail, that's not going to be noticeable. And if it is, I can just worry at it with some sandpaper or something. So this is starting to get sticky enough that if I hold it on here, it might actually, it's not going to hold on its own, but it, it's not going to just pull away either. So I think that angle is okay to make sure the rotation is it even make sure that it's straight on the top that the blade is in, in the direction Ooh, it's stuck I want to make sure the blade is yeah, it's not quite hard yet, but it's sticking, which is good. I want to make sure that the blade is in line with the hilt. Just need to hold it, not mess with it, for another minute.
Well, it's a third of a minute. Half a minute. We're doing, we're doing you know, decimals or fractions or something here. Yeah, it slipped. I'll hold this for another, uh, start another minute. Sixth of a minute. Two thirds of a minute. Four left. So it looks okay from here. It looks okay from the outside, I think. I'm not sure that I can do much more with this. I think that I am going to hope that it stays put. And it looks like it is. It's not it's not slouching or sinking or anything. But I think I think what do you say? It looks, it looks, I mean, other than the color, right? It looks like it's, it looks like it's okay. Pretty straight with the, with the hilt. Okay. The, I probably would rotate the blade a little bit that way, but it, if I touch it again, um, see, they're not going to move or it'll break the adhesion. So the epoxy stuff on the paper here is barely malleable. It's not quite totally solid yet, but because the sword isn't, it's not moving uh, from its own weight, what little there is, and it's holding the angle. I'm gonna say that I succeeded in fabricating a replacement sword that after it's primed, they won't know that it's just a toothpick. Okay. It's not perfect. Like I said, I'd rotate it that way just the tiniest little bit, but can't do that. So I'm going to set that down and <laughs> learn my lesson when I fractured that first blade and turned it into sawdust. I'm going to let this set, and then a little bit later today, I'm going to take all these guys up and prime them. Then they will look like this color instead of the darker color. That's the color of the, the rosin. Okay, I'm going to prime them and then have them available for relaxing painting on Wednesday. And I know that you all would rather me start picking through little pieces of submarine and trying to collect all the stuff that goes into the forward torpedo room in one place and, you know, rub this the silver paint off of the painted ones and pry off an unpainted one or two from the one that was glued together because there's a missing torpedo. And I know that you'd really like to watch me I'll try to paint all the detail on the torpedo room doors and all of that sort of thing. But uh, we're going to do Dungeons and Dragons stuff again now that we've got all of these. And there's 10 of them. And this will take 
the better part of a long time uh, to get them all done. I think I'm going to try to start with some of the simple ones. I'm going to try to start with these guys once we decide what the cloak color would be. And then the armored ones because it's just a whole lot easier to paint them than the faces. So these four in sets of two will probably be the first ones that I'll be working on. And then I'm not sure after that. Um, I'm kind of liking, I'm kind of liking this one, the, the simple druid, you know, with the pouches and bags and the sheath dress and the cape. You do that. That might be kind of cool to do. And then we have these two fire fireball casters. We have the one with the pointy hat. And we have the one with the towel and cape. Maybe those. Sure. Good thing that we got all these new tiny brushes, though. Nikki bought these for me because I destroyed one of my earlier brushes and started complaining. But now I've got these these brushes. This is a nice detail brush. And then there's the super fine, super fine detail brush that is something I'll likely needing to be used use on these figures. When I was painting the Fink, this brush was as detailed as I needed to get. But now that will be one of the coarser brushes, and these other brushes will be the details. So I've got new brushes to use, and that's pretty good too. Anyway, um, this has been Relaxing Painting with Dice and Dungeons. I spent most of the morning, two hours, opening boxes of uh, Ren Wall Polaris launching nuclear submarine cutaway models. And as I said, I purchased three of those things, hoping that I would get at least one complete set out of them. It looks like I can get one complete set out of two of them, at least most for the most part. One of them, a little bit of painting started, but the parts are not glued together. The other one, there's some gluing, and I might be able to salvage something out of those. Um, one of them had instructions, which is nice, because there's a whole lot of pieces and parts. Um, you know, at some point, I'll probably I'll probably dive into trying to put those things together. So I said, when I was young, I just painted them the you know brown, tan, silver, red, that kind of thing, and totally skipped all of the incredible detail that's built into it. Now I think I might even try to paint some of the gauges and the dials on the gauges and things even, which will be challenging, but it will make for a much better looking model. Anyway, I spent some time opening those and exploring them with you to see what parts were there. And there were some unpleasant surprises and some pleasant surprises, and it looks like we can probably make something of those some other time. But these will get primed. We'll start doing those again. Minifigs that probably at some point or another may end up showing up on our Dyson Dungeons stream which is on Sundays at 2. Please join us there. I want to thank everybody who rated us, any new followers. If you really like what you see and want to support support Dice and Dungeons, you can go to patreon.com slash diceanddungeons and become a supporter there. You get access to uh, special content, including uh, some of the warm-ups, which are short but oftentimes entertaining. And there's other perks, too. You could even help uh, contribute to the shows. This is Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays from 10-ish until 2-ish. It's going to be a little bit early today as I finished up. Yes, this worked. It looks, it looks decent. Fabricating the sword that didn't get printed on a 3D printer. Everything else looks really good, but that one didn't happen. And now, uh, now it's there. Those that get primed, 
And starting on Wednesday, we'll be painting figures for Dyson Dungeons once again. Thank you all for joining. Thanks for uh, putting up with the Fink last week. That Fink is finally finished. And for the Renoir cutaway, actual, really old um, vintage uh, submarines. Yeah, watching me open those up and see what we've got. That will be a very challenging kit to work on as I, I don't know, tackle that at some point in the future. So thanks again. See you Wednesday at 10-ish, and we will start to see paint applied to these mini figs that are fresh off our rosin printer. Thanks again. See you then. Bye.